Hey, what's up guys, Ryan here. And today I'm gonna to do my own benchmark test with After Effects Beta's new multi-frame rendering. And I'm actually gonna bring it up against some other multi-frame renderings that are commercial options that are available right now. And let's really stack up to see what's the fastest rendering you can do right now that's available today. So before we get into the benchmarks, let me give you some context of the project I rendered. I know that there's a After Effects benchmark test, but I wasn't really that interested in that. So instead, what I did is I took a real world project and I used that real world project to kind of see where it stacks up and where it fits right now. So basically this project I rendered out is just sort of this astronaut sort of a space project with a lot of 3D, a lot of 2D. It uses a lot of third party programs, has lots of image sequences, using effects such as first lift depth of field, deep glow, Magic Bolt look, so it's really effect heavy. So what I did before, every time I added the project to the render queue, is I cleared the cache, make sure everything was out, and did a clean render from start every single time each benchmark got completed to make sure that nothing was sort of left in the cache that would be able to speed up the render. So let me display the benchmark results first, and I'll go into these more in depth if you're curious about the software that I'm using for this. I rendered the bench base mark after After Effects 2020 with a time of 47 minutes and seven seconds. Also in After Effects 2020, I used a program called Render Garden, which knocked that same render time all the way down to 14 minutes and 22 seconds with another program called Render Boss coming in at 26 minutes. So even right there, we're talking a significant jump with these third party programs versus the built in native After Effects 2020 renderer. When we move over to the After Effects beta testing, the results are a little interesting and a little confusing. The first test I did, I got a time of 52 minutes and 40 seconds. And I actually went back into the settings to make sure that my multi-frame checkbox was on. And it was, so I was still surprised that this even took longer than the standard render of After Effects 2020. And again, I completely recognize that this is a beta and things may change and sort of get updated as it come out, but that was definitely a surprise to me. So I went ahead and I turned multi-frame rendering off and I got a benchmark result of 53 minutes and 31 seconds for the same project that Render Garden was able to knock out in 14 minutes and 22 seconds. So Render Garden, which got the best results, is a third party program. It's 99 bucks. And this has actually become kind of the go to renderer for myself and my team here at Chomp. And this is kind of what we've been using from here on out. It gets really great results and really cuts down the render times. After I add to the render queue, I go ahead and say plant seeds. And then Render Garden is going to pop up a little dialog box asking me how many seeds should be created for this item. And basically seeds is the amount of threads that's going to be used from your processor. So this may vary between machines and what your processor is. Right now, I currently have the 24 core 48 thread AMD Threadripper with 64 gigs of RAM and kind of a sweet spot I found for amount of processors being used versus how much RAM gets used by each processor is I usually like to go with eight seeds. So after I add the eight seeds, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And what you saw there was a bunch of dialog boxes that popped up. And let me go ahead and bring some of these to the front, but what it's doing is it's breaking it up into individual movie segments. So each thread is making its own segment to render out a movie. And then at the end, it's gonna take all those segments and render out one cohesive movie. So you see down here in the dock, we have a bunch of command windows that are opening up and each one of them are opening an instance of After Effects. Each one of these are gonna take up a different part of the sequence, which is about you know a little bit over a minute long and it's going to start breaking up the whole entire After Effects movie into little segments and each one of these processors are gonna take its own frame range from that one sequence. So you can see some of them start at 23 seconds, another one start at 28 seconds, start at 33 seconds. And if I open up the seed bank where it's putting all these seeds, you'll see a little folder called segments. And inside of here, you'll see how it's breaking up each of them into little segments. But as you can see, it's putting everything together and the seeds will keep cranking out those segments until the whole sequence gets worked on and it'll bring them all together at once. Cool, and when it's done, you'll see a little dialog box popped up saying Render Garden completed the project in 14 minutes and 22 seconds. Render Garden is really great. It's, it's really efficient and, and I feel like it's the fastest so far. One of the disadvantages that it doesn't have that we'll kind of talk about the other one is you, you just don't really see a whole lot of what's happening and it doesn't have really a user interface window or really any sort of extra tool so you kind of monitor what's going on, but it is very consistent and works really well. Coming in second place was another paid option called Render Boss. 
And we've definitely used this a lot as well. And RenderBoss is great. It, it does sort of a similar thing where it's going to use multiple threads to render out more frames. But the nice thing about RenderBoss is it has a little bit of a better user interface. It also has easy connectivity if you have a lot of different machines in-house and you want to make in-house render farm using multiple machines for one After Effects project. So similar to Render Garden, I'm going to dock AE Render Boss and I'm going to say send Q to Render Boss. It's going to send it to Render Boss in the background. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open up Render Boss's user interface. You can have a look at that and kind of get a look behind the scenes of what it's doing. So there it is. It has my project in the queue as well as previous projects. And it's going to go ahead and give me a percentage of what it's rendering and it's going to start rendering. This really isn't a Render Boss tutorial, but the nice thing here is you have your thread management. So as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, you can tell it how demanding you want to be on your computer. And I have this set on uh, boss AI demanding, which is going to use as many resources as possible. And you can set this to something like minimal or overlord or, you know, kind of adjust how much resources you want to dedicate to your After Effects render. You might have seen it, but in the current thread box, it just turned green. It's adding threads as it's going along. It's automatically calculating what kind of resources it wants to use to render out your project. So you'll see the box flash every now and then because it's adding more threads automatically. And if I go over to the After Effects control console window here, you can kind of start to see what it's doing and how many threads are rendering. It's going to do individual Photoshop files and it's going to make a giant image sequence and then bring that all together at the end into the movie file of what you set in the render queue. So I'm bringing over the window here so you can see how it's creating individual image sequences. And you can see how a temp frame comes up and then it slowly gets replaced by a full Photoshop frame. And each individual thread is creating this long image sequence of the render that's going to put together in one movie file later. This is a great technique and this is kind of common with, you know, After Effects' built-in multi-frame rendering options. And it will delete all those files at the end when it's done rendering it. But if you are someone who syncs everything to Dropbox or pCloud or something like that, it's good to pause that so you're not syncing gigs and gigs and gigs of files to Dropbox only for them to be deleted later. So once it's done, you can kind of look at other options if you want to. I just went ahead here and sort of sort of showed all the effects that are being used and kind of gives all the details about um, the project, how fast it was rendering and any sort of information you might want to know, which is which is nice to have if, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into how the multi frame rendering is working inside of RenderBoss. Final duration for that was 26 minutes and 44 seconds, which is still hands down faster than the standard render in After Effects or the After Effects beta multi frame rendering right now. All right, guys, so that was just a quick breakdown of After Effects' beta multi-frame rendering, sort of benchmarking it to some of the other tools that are available now for a price, of course, but some of the results are great and it's tools that we use every day. So thanks again, and we'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Feel free to uh, comment if you have any questions. Talk to you then.